this is an opportunity for you all to uh, not only see components of the effort to bring a memorial at the state capitol, but also to listen to the, and learn from and hear from the artists, other individuals who've been key uh, advocates throughout this, this history. And just like the governor said uh, in this video, Sand Creek Massacre is a story that many have never heard of, and it's probably one of the most important in the state of Colorado's history. It's a great honor for me to be here and be involved in the Sand Creek Massacre Memorial. And uh, as a descendant of uh, victims at, the, at Sand Creek, uh, my great-grandfather and great-grandmother, uh, Julia Bent and Edmund Geary, were uh, survivors of that. And I've heard those stories uh, from my mother and from my mother's cousins and relations my whole life. And uh, I never thought anything would ever happen about it. And I'm so pleased to be here, and I'm honored to be part of this. I'm honored to be part of this program and, and to, be, to be part of this memorial that uh, you have, you've decided to have and honored the, the Cheyenne and other tribes, the Arapahoes and other tribes that Kiowas were there, there that, were, that were involved in this. And, uh, you know that uh, over 150 men, women, and children were killed uh, during that battle. Uh, there were so many uh, chiefs and headsmen that were killed that it almost destroyed the Cheyenne culture because there were so many people were lost. And there were so many women and children that were lost. And that's why I chose to, to uh, depict a, a woman uh, as, a, as a memorial at the Sand Creek. And I put a woman in here who's uh, asking for mercy and asking for help. And she's telling her people as they're leaving to, to remember us. Remember who we are. Don't forget us. Don't forget us. And she has an empty cradle. And uh, she's, she's lost a child. And she can't, uh, she can't go any further. And uh, she's extending her arm out for, to tell her relatives goodbye and uh, ask for mercy. Cheyenne women in those days, when, when they lost somebody, they cut their hair and they, they cut their legs and they cut part of their fingers off in digits for... Uh, and so I, I've done that to this woman. I've cut off one of her little fingers, a joint of her little finger, because she was in mourning, and uh, she doesn't know what's going to happen to her. And I extended her arm out, uh, asking for uh, help and asking for remembrance. And uh, I've asked that uh, this memorial, that we, we make a path, a trail, passing in front of her, uh, and I would like for the to be able to get sand the actual sand from Sand Creek and bring it up here and mix it with concrete and make a trail, a path, and let descendants walk through it, putting their footprints, women and children and men, put their footprints in this sand where it hardens and memorializes them as they leave it on their journey of survival, of which it still is to this day. Uh, those tribes have, have, have survived. We've survived above all kind of odds. And that trail would, would indicate that that's the trail we've taken and, and we're still here. And this is what this is about. It's not totally about Native American people, but it's about all people and, and for us to remember that we are God's children and we should remember those things. And, and so we put this little statue of this, this woman asking for mercy, asking for help, and asking to be remembered. And that was my dream and my thoughts about the Sand Creek Memorial, that we remember the women and remember the children and remember the people and that we never do these kind of things again in our lives, everywhere. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, let me maybe start by saying, if you are of uh, Jewish ancestry, what the Holocaust was to you, Sand Creek is to us almost unspeakable, barbaric, satanic kind of a, kind of a uh, experience that our people had to go through. It's one of the great black parts, I guess, in Colorado history, one of the darkest parts, I suppose. But we all learned from those terrible times, and we, as uh, former speaker Mr. Pratt said, we try and learn from those and move forward and do better further on. But there was an awful lot of people, in fact, too many to remember all and to thank all of them. But maybe I ought to start by saying <clears throat> some 
that we owe the biggest debt of gratitude are not with us anymore. They moved on, as Indian people say, to the next world, the next camp. Uh, but certainly we owe a debt of gratitude to them, and two of them to come to my mind were Captain Silas Soule and Lieutenant Joe Kramer, who were the two officers who refused to let their men participate in that when uh, Colonel Shivington ordered that charge. Uh, they were also the ones that wrote to Congress and to the Department of the Army complaining about it and asking for an investigation, which the Army did. Unfortunately, it was just uh, you know, something like three months after the Civil War ended, only a few months before that, President Lincoln had been assassinated. assassinated. I think that a lot of the uh, impetus that would have gone towards doing a much thorough, more thorough job and trying to bring people to justice didn't happen. They were too busy in the reconstruction of the South and all kinds of other things. Uh, it's said that a number of our chiefs were killed, and of course a few were injured badly, as Black Kettle was, shot numerous times. His wife was all shot, was also shot numerous times. But he was one of them that managed to escape. It is said that he carried his wife on his back for two days and two nights in that bitter November cold to get to a friendly camp where they could be taken care of and their wounds could be tended to and they could get some food. Unfortunately, as you know from history, it was only several years later on the Washtenaw River in Oklahoma when Black Kettle was killed in a very similar incident at the hands of George Armstrong Custer. Custer did not have howitzers behind him, but he had his own band playing the Gary Owen while his troops charged into a sleeping camp in the morning and killed many more Cheyennes and Arapahoes. But Indian people think, I think, in very interesting terms. One time I asked an elderly lady, this has been 25 years ago, when she told me she had visited the Sand Creek site one morning early in the fog. It's a creek bottom, as you know. There's no creek anymore. The water's been diverted or dried up. It's just a dry creek now, but there was once a creek there. And she told me at that time, she said, she, if you go there early in the morning, when the fog is still settled in the valley part, and you're very quiet, you can hear children cry. I think she, that's what she really could hear. It's a, it's a very, very solemn place for all, should be for all people, but certainly for the Shine of Repo. So I'm just delighted that my friend colleague, um, Harvey Pratt has done this very, very wonderful small sculpture. Harvey and I uh, only just recently met tonight, but I know his family very well. And he comes from a talented family. His brother and I, in fact, uh, Charlie Pratt, we used to travel a lot to the different art shows together. So one thing about Native people, if they talk a few minutes together, they'll find out they're not only friends, but they're probably related somewhere back in, <laughs> somewhere back in the back. So Harvey and I haven't established that yet, but we're getting closer. In any event, thank you for being here, and thank you for supporting this very wonderful uh, uh, event, this wonderful statue that's going to be built. Thank you. But we're here tonight for, I think, four reasons. Uh, number one, to honor the Native peoples and their stewardship of what we call Colorado. They were here long before us and they took care of the land. Uh, number two, uh, the obvious thing that we've been hearing tonight, to um, acknowledge our terrible mistakes that, the, that our ancestors, and that is us, their descendants, made at Sand Creek. Number three, as Senator uh, Campbell said, to make sure this doesn't happen again. And number four, uh, in our heart, uh, like Senator Campbell's, we find a couple of heroes that emerge from this tragedy. And the heroes uh, that we find are Captain Sewell, who refused to participate. And the story that I heard is Chivington held a, uh, it was during the Civil War, Chivington held a very quick uh, council. And um, the question was whether he was going to execute Sewell for disobeying a direct command in wartime. He could have done that, he didn't. And so I think that um, that responsibility um, gives us enormous hope. I see this memorial not just as um, a representative of the travesty that our people inflicted upon the native peoples, but I think it's a form of healing. And from that, I actually take a form of wisdom it's a wisdom by owning the mistakes of Sand Creek, by embracing them. You know, basic instincts throughout all humans, natives and immigrants and settlers alike, um, make us capable of doing very horrible things. 
It isn't just one massacre that humans have done to one another, it's many. 150 years ago, 700 Coloradans act in anger and in vengeance. Increasingly, I'm glad to say, injustice to our native brothers and sisters is being addressed. It is being addressed at your request. It is being addressed by us going back in history and, like I said, owning it. As a Coloradan, I'm especially proud of our governor. He took a step forward, and uh, I, I don't want to uh, malign your uh, previous profession, but it's not often that politicians step up and own their mistakes. Wouldn't it be a wonderful world if they did that more often? So we have an opportunity to follow in the lead of our governor and in the lead of our legislature. We have an opportunity to follow up and lend support to that apology. And um, I think that um, it exhibits tremendous honesty, courage, and hope. So for me, I didn't just see the, tra the uh, tragedy. I saw the tragedy. It, you can't miss it, right? But I saw that this was a state filled with people that are not willing to sweep it under the rug, that are not willing to forget it and to move on. This is the kind of people I want to live among. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I think, uh, you know, comes to mind is, um, you know, why are you guys doing this? Well, we're doing it because Cinda and I and the people at One Earth Future believe, as our logo and our name implies, that this is a world, this is One Earth that we have. And we need to learn how to work together and to live together cooperatively. And we can do it. Our uh, distant relatives in the past were not very good at it. Um, but I, I believe that uh, this memorial will help us, if you will, break the code a little bit. Um, you know, the people at One Earth Future, we like it because it represents a global story. It represents, represents a history of man. But it also represents a poignant local story. This happened in our backyard. And um, it's, um, I think, an opportunity to look into the future differently. So confronting the hard truth of Sand Creek, I think, allows us to move beyond. And I'm reminded by a great quote from the historian Santa Yana, who said, to not read history means that you're condemned to repeat it. Well, this history is something we'll put front and center so that there's no, hopefully, no opportunity for us to repeat it.